want to build a constructed team uh, who is battling for each other, who are uh, unified, uh, and who will get results. Uh Eric Ten Hag, baby, he's here. And this is the first interview with him at the club by Manchester United. It's a big interview. We've been waiting for it, right? Let's bury the end of that season. Let's bury that season. Let's not talk about it anymore. Let's talk about what's coming up next. And what I'm going to do in this video is run through the full transcript of this Eric Ten Hag interview. We're going to take a look at every single point he's made. There's going to be a second part that's going to be released on Tuesday. I'll cover that too, as well as Eric Ten Hag's first press conference as manager that's coming up this afternoon. It's going to be a busy, busy week for United. So make sure you join the United People's TV community. I'll try and cover it all in full for you. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell as well. But let's dive straight into this one. And let's read through every single thing that Eric Ten Hag has said in his first interview as Manchester United manager. Let's react to it together. Let's go. Let's dive straight in. Eric, welcome to Manchester United. How do you feel about starting this new chapter? I would say the word exciting. I really look forward to doing this job at this club in massive history. And we want to restore it to where it belongs. I mean, he's obviously going to say that, right? Let's try and get some more juicy stuff. What excites you the most about this opportunity of managing this club? Let me zoom in for you a little bit more, just in case. No, I can't zoom in anymore. I think many reasons. First of all, we want to make the fans proud. Second, of course, we are in this moment. The current situation is obviously not that good. It's a big challenge. Now, that is the understatement of the century, right? This, this United job, by some margin, is the hardest job in football. It has been the hardest job in football since Fergie has retired, and it's only getting more and more difficult, isn't it? With everything that's going on with Liverpool and City, and United have just fallen so far. And I, this is something I've, I've said. Eric Ten Hag's already admitted that he could have gone elsewhere. He could have gone to different clubs uh, where they had better structures in place and success was far more likely to happen quicker there. But he didn't. He's got the ambition to take United back to the top. And for me, that's one big, big plus about him straight away. Uh, he goes, I want to build and construct a team who are battling for each other, who are unified and who will get results. That's something that we all want to hear, right? Because we haven't seen that for so long. These players just, they haven't battled for each other. There's been no intensity in the football. And if there's one thing you'd say about, about Ajax under Eric Ten Hag, it is that intensity that they have. Real, real intensity. Because also we are playing in the theatre of dreams. And it's not dreams anymore, it's nightmares. We want to entertain but in the end, the intention is to play fantastic football. If we can't play fantastic football, we still have to win. But that has to be said of, uh, as, uh, if people are looking for criticisms, maybe, of Eric Ten Hag. Some might say that he he's, doesn't have too much flexibility, but I would completely disagree. If you've watched, I, I've, I haven't watched Ajax that much, I'll be completely honest. But the, the football I have watched, I've seen different styles. He's basically, he's not completely loyal to a 4 2 3 1. He's, he's more loyal to overarching foundations that can change formations it's not just about the formation it's about how you play and more importantly how you win uh it was interviewed by the way by i think her name's pm mullenstein renee's uh, daughter um and this was the next question she asked it was only last week that your last game was at ajax and you're already here in england what made you want to come so quickly you didn't take a break and this is what eric ten hard said before a season you have to prepare and when you're in a club I will say it's a continual process. You're working on next season and still you are in the current season, but we didn't have that time now. And now we close the season. I'm coming over to meet people, to roll out the strategy, to prepare pre-season, prepare the staff and prepare a squad. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. No wasted time. That's what I would immediately say about Eric Ten Hag's first interview, the way he's conducting himself, what he's saying. Eric Ten Hag is wasting absolutely no time whatsoever. Look, we, could, we, we, we kind of should be here the day after that game against Crystal Palace, the day after that season ends, and we're, we're doing like an end-of-season review. We're speaking about how shit we've been, about everything that's gone wrong and what our new manager can sort. But instead, we're hearing the interview from our new manager. He's already talking about the plans for next season, the plans for pre-season, the plans for the squad, the players. He's already working on that. And it's, it's good to see United actually being proactive, using their time correctly. No wasted time here with Eric Ten Hag. I don't think you'll waste any at all. Here's the next question. It goes, there was a lot of people who really liked your long-term vision for this club. What can you share with us about what you see in the future for United? Firstly, 
We have to accept the current situation, but also know that one year ago, this club, this team was second in the Premier League. There's potential. And now it's up to us to get that out. It's a process. It will take time. But I'm convinced we will come to that point where we, we will get success. We have to work hard and it has to be based on the right philosophy and strategy. And of course, yeah, it's completely true. You might say that we've, we've heard similar things before under different managers, but I don't know. It feels different with Eric Ten Hag. It feels like the club's at, at a different point with Eric Ten Hag, with the structures and the changes that have happened behind the scenes. We're more geared towards success happening now under Eric Ten Hag than we have been under Moyes, Van Hal, Mourinho or Solskjaer. And that's exciting in itself. And he's talking about the philosophy and the strategy. Absolutely, that's got to be done properly. Uh, next question he was asked, in terms of the short term, then what are you seeing happening in the next few weeks? Firstly, we will have a break. We'll start pre-season on the 27th of June. So there you go, 27th of June, just over a month's time. And I will get a few of the squad, a few of the individual players in certain positions. We want to renew the squad. But as I said one year ago, this squad was second in the league. So there is potential and I'm really looking forward to cooperating with the squad. It's kind of something that I do maintain. And then I step back and I'm like, mm, really? Because this squad did finish second. And when I went into this season, as I said, I've always felt like I'm a, a bit of a moderate United fan. I don't go too excessive with my, apart from Harry Maguire, who I've really gone in on uh, because he's captain of United. And I think captains have to be held accountable to a different standard. Any coach should be able to get more out of this squad than we're currently getting. There's no doubt that we need to improve and sign players, right? But I think Eric Ten Hag is right there in saying that there should, we should definitely be getting more out of this squad. And I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be interested to see what he can do with those players. See what else he says. Well, speaking of the players then, how much are you looking forward to getting to know them and working with them closely as well? That's really exciting. Also for me, of course, it's new. I was at Ajax for a long time, four and a half years. We had a great time, but now it's a new start also for me. And we have to build it up from the bottom on zero. I have to build starting a new relationship with the squad and with my players. Now, Ralph Ranick will be giving him a... Maybe it's not a dossier, however you want to call it. Nobody will know the squad better than Ralph, right? So he'll be telling Eric Ten Hag about the players that he feels he can trust, the players that he doesn't feel that he can trust. But ultimately, Eric Ten Hag will be making his own decisions. He'll be building his own relationships. He may be taking advice from others, but he'll make his own assessment before he starts booting these players out of the squad. So while so many of us might just be like, I'll just get rid of all of these immediately, Eric Ten Hag will take the next few weeks Probably, maybe not the next few weeks. I don't know how long it will take. But he'll make his own mind up on what players deserve to be part of this new building at Manchester United that he's going to be doing. Interesting. Uh, how important is it then for the players to make sure they impress you over the summer and to get the best out of the squad that you've got? That's what I expect. I have high expectations from myself. And that is also what I demand from my squad. They have to cooperate together and they have to give every day their best. And I would say for me, good is not good enough. We have to do better. I like him already. These players have just got away with it for so long. For so, so long, they've just sat there. They've been able to do what they wanted to. Player powers dominated at the club. And it's created this culture. that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer fixed it in one sense, but then by moddy coddling the players had allowed it to fester in other ways and that's why it's still so broken good isn't good enough i like that line that's a good line from eric ten Hag, and he will demand a lot from these players you you'll know that i've i've covered in quite a lot of detail here on united people's tv uh all the interviews that he's done all the stuff that ex-players have said about working under eric ten Hag. he's fierce he is intense but if you get on side with him and you work with him it can create the sort of Ajax team you saw in 2018-19. And anybody who doesn't join that train at United will be kicked out of the club. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to that. In terms of a couple of players, we've got a few players who used to be at Manchester United who have links to Ajax. One is Edwin van der Sar. Yes, please. Who is a United legend, but also an Ajax legend. What have you said to him about joining Man United? Ooh, it's interesting. He said, yeah, we had some conversations about it. Actually, he was the first one that I told I'd be leaving Ajax and would go to Manchester United. I think in his emotion, he's still Manchester United. He's a fan. He's the biggest fan. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yes, Edwin, especially in Ajax.
but he has to lead Ajax in this moment. And I'm sure he will always support Man United and he will support me as long as we are not playing against Ajax. It could happen though, couldn't it? Again's asking whether he's joining. He goes, I hope so, because that will tell us we are in the Champions League. We have to return as, to that competition as quickly as possible. But Eric Ten Hag, the first person he told about joining Manchester United was Edwin van der Sar. And him saying there that he's still a massive fan. Look, we all know that van der Sar to Man United is a huge dream. It will be a, an incredible appointment. And I've, I think it will happen. But as he says there, he needs to lead Ajax at this moment. They've lost Eric Ten Hag. They've lost Mark Overmars. He's the one person from that trio who's still remaining at the club. And he will have to guide Ajax through the next couple of years. And I think in two years, I think we can realistically say, Edwin van der Sar to Manchester United, I really think that could happen. And I'm, I'm so excited about that. Um, there's been a long line of former Dutch players and managers here. How excited are you to continue the legacy? Yes, I'll have to do my best and give everything every day. That's a bit boring. Uh, Manchester United is a club with such rich history. Are you looking forward to learning more about that? Because, of course, I know the history of United. I know the big times and the audience, the vibe that can be around Old Trafford. I watched them in their big times when Fergie was manager, during the really successful times when they won titles and were dominating Europe. That was a while ago. But also before Sir Alex, United were a really big club. Busby, Charlton, they gave Manchester United a presence to the outside world from winning and winning in a spectacular way. Winning so they entertain people. Yeah, man, let's bring that back. Let's bring that back, please, Eric. You've never played at Man United before, but have you been to a game at Old Trafford? No, he hasn't been there yet. Well, see what the first game of the season is then. Are you looking forward to the first game? Of course, I just mentioned the vibe that's in the stadium. Of course, I want to get that experience. The fans behind the ambiance at Old Trafford. It will be fabulous. And I'm really looking forward to getting that experience. What will it be like for you when you first walk out that tunnel? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. What they can expect is that I will give my best. I will give everything necessary to get United back to where they belong. Some of you might think that this is lip service, quite a lot of it. But I really, really, really have such a good impression of Eric Ten Hag and the ambition that he has. I don't think he's just saying, you know how... Uh, a, a player will join a club and goes, oh, I'm, I've always dreamed of playing for this club. And you're like, yeah, have, you, have you really? Probably not. I wouldn't say that Eric Ten Hag has dreamed about Manchester United, but he, the ambition that he has to take us back where we belong is the ambition he has for his own career. You know what I mean? Like, he, he's, he's putting his own legacy on the line of succeeding at United. Because if he doesn't succeed at Manchester United, He'll just be remembered for one of the, for being a manager who was massively successful at Ajax, but wasn't able to replicate that at a club of United's stature and size. That's what he'll want to do. I'm excited about that. He was asked there, was it always an aspiration of yours to, to manage in the Premier League? I'm not a dreamer. I live by the day. I give my best and I make my decisions based on clearness and logic. Me and Eric can get along. I'll tell you that. We need a good concept and we need the right people around. When we give everything we have every day, then we will get success. Then you see where you will end up. Live by the day and focus on titles and don't dream about other things that can happen in the future. I'm a very practical person, I think, in my nature. I do that as well. I'm not, not necessarily living day by day, but it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's that logical approach that we need. You know, I so far off where we want to be that if we were just to focus about, oh, let's get to a title and, and you can't see the path to get there, it would be difficult. And that's why we've had so many crossroads and so many different changes of managers. We need that clarity of thinking and also decision making at the club. I hope that it does get the power to actually put this into practice. One of the main things about United is known for his fan base. Ah, it's a bit boring question, that one. Let's talk about let's talk about Ajax as it's still fresh and winning the league. How important was it for you to sign off by winning it? It's all about that. It's all about winning titles. When you start a project, what we did at Ajax, the project I had, what the project was I had to make Ajax Europe proof. And we wanted to be on back on top in Holland. We now all of that. This is this is an interesting question, I think, an interesting response. For you, what was your greatest achievement at Ajax in your four years there? Because it's difficult to choose as you were continually number one, but our journeys in Europe were magnificent. I really enjoyed it. And in my first whole season, we achieved a semi-final. I think that was the best performance. I think it was a really good performance because it's not that easy for a club in Holland, not a big league, to compete with the European top clubs. Finally, we were short before the final, but it was a magnificent journey. And look, let's hope that we can get back on top in Europe. It's been a long ass time. We're so far off. 
we really are so far off. But I've, I've just got such a renewed energy about United and what we might be doing under Eric Ten Hag. Call me naive if you want. Call me foolish. You can do what you, you, you do you. I'll be me. And I'm dead excited about what's going to happen under Eric Ten Hag. Let's see what else he's saying down there. If there's anything interesting. Do you find that when teams come to Ajax, they play at Ajax, it's a little bit like a cup final. When teams come to Old Trafford, they play against United. It's a big occasion. That's, that's, a, that's a good question. I think that's the comparison. I've been in Bayern Munich. I've been in Ajax. And now I come to United. I know our opponents are highly motivated. They are over-motivated to beat United. You have to be ready for that. United's always the cup final. It's still the cup final for so many teams. Always has been. To go and win that battle, even if they are over-motivated, we have to be more. We always have to be willing to be more willing to win the game than the opponent. That's just something we haven't done for so long. He speaks a lot of cliche in this interview, but he has to speak a lot of cliche in the interview. I've spoken to you about that quite a few times before. We're a club that exists in the shadows at the moment, and we need cliches to bring us back into the light. Look at that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Ajax and United are both teams with very clear identities as clubs. How important is it for you to bring your footballing philosophy to United? We don't have to go over. We have, we don't have to go over my football. It's about the Man United football and the Man United identity and philosophy. I don't know what that is anymore. I think that you pointed it out. It has to be about attacking football. We have to bring structures in the way of playing so we can play attacking football. Now you described Ajax as a fighting machine. Is that how you want to build this United team as well? Good point to end this interview on. As always, everywhere I was in my career, I have high demands of my players. I expect them to fight and to give 100%. I already mentioned that's only good enough. That only, the only good is good enough. No, not only that, we have to do better. And they have to cooperate. They have to be unified to form a team and battle the opponent. I can't wait to see what he actually does, whether he's actually able to be successful at Manchester United. Because, of course, there's going to be so many of you that are worried, that fear that it's just going to be another failure. I don't know. It just feels a bit different. From every interview I've covered now, I've covered all the interviews out in Holland. I've covered now his first interview there with Manchester United as manager. I'm going to cover his first press conference as well because... The club will ask him very different questions to what the journalists and the press and the media will ask him. So the interview that I'll cover later on today, maybe we can do it live. It's going to be different. But hearing him speak there with real clarity on what he wants to do at Manchester United, the ambitions that he has, that he now shares with the club to get us back to the top. I'm excited about it, man. I'm sure you are too. You can let me know what you think about that interview. As I said, I'll run through the full interview there at part one of the transcript. Maybe I'll do part two tomorrow if that's released you can let me know what you think about it in the comments below but the eric ten Hag era is starting man it will officially start in pre-season on 27th of june but it's already underway how excited are you